Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to begin the formal portion of our event. Please stand for the presentation of the colors by the Herbert Field Honor, Base Honor Guard, the singing of the national anthem by Colonel Ed Espinoza, and the invocation by Chaplain Tom Azar. Present the colors. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched. Were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave May we begin our prayer with a moment of silence for our brothers and sisters in uniform deployed around the world. Our Heavenly Father, how appropriate that we celebrate our 50th anniversary a few days before St. Valentine's. For what gives meaning and purpose and inspiration to one's life but godly love? And what ignited each one of us to commit and raise our hand to serve our country and for their partner to follow them around the world but patriotic love? And what ignited the vision of our early Air Force enlisted village leaders and the widows to build a community a half a century ago, but brotherly love, and what virtue unites God's rule and the mom's rule, but sisterly love, and what describes God's relationship with us and each of us with one another at Bob Hope Village, but our community love. And finally, O oh Lord, as you bless the food before us, nourish both our body and our soul so we may continue to demonstrate Christ's love to each other and to the world around us 
And we ask it all in your most holy and beloved name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, Hulbert Field Honor Guard, Colonel Espinoza, and Chaplain Azar. If this is your first time hearing Colonel Espinoza sing the national anthem, all I can tell you is, you're welcome, America. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the Air Force Enlisted Village's 50th Anniversary Gala. I am proud to introduce my partner in crime and fellow MC for this evening, Ms. Bobby Jo O'Mara. She is the director of Babo Village. <laughs> if you all know her, you know she makes her job look easy when it's not. And Bobby Jo always has a warm hug for everyone, an answer to every problem, and a sarcastic comment for anyone within earshot. So she is definitely my kind of people. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to introduce our second MC for the evening, Mrs. Tracy Green, Special Assistant for Bob Hope Village. She's also the spouse of Colonel Nathan Green, commander of the 492nd Special Operations Wing. As you'll see tonight, she's quick-witted, mm -hmm. <laughs> and her personality will light up any room. She's brought much joy and laughter to our office, and I thank every day for her. At this time, we'd like to extend a special welcome to all of our distinguished guests. We are so grateful to have so many of you here tonight to help us celebrate. Please hold your applause until all names have been announced. Our guest speaker, the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Nice. <laughs> Good one. Okay, it's going to be like that. Yeah. Okay. All we, right. we got you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Buckle up, sir. <laughs> Chief Ma or, I'm, see, now you have me messed up, sir. <laughs> Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force number 18, Chief Master Sergeant Khalith Wright and his wife, Tanya. From the Air Force Special Operations Command Team, the Commander, Lieutenant General Brad Webb, and his wife, Donna. And the Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Greg Smith, and his wife, Tina. The former Commander, Air Force Special Operations Command, Lieutenant Gen General Bruce Fister, United States Air Force retired, and his wife, Melissa. The former Vice Commander, Air Force Special Operations Command, Major General Norm Brosnick, United States Air Force retired. The Air Force Special Operations Command representative to the Chief of Staff Civic Leader Program, Mr. Tony Hughes and his wife, Mia. <laughs> Representing Congressman Gate, Matt Gates' office, Ms. Laura Ruckus. <laughs> Okaloosa County Commissioner Carol Ketchell and her husband, the Honorable Terry Ketchell. The Director of Operations, Air Force Special Operations Command, Brigadier General Bill Holt and his wife, Jan. The Director of Strategic Plans, Programs and Requirements, Air Force Special Operations Command, Brigadier General Sean Farrell and his wife, Annie Farrell. From the 96th Test Wing Leadership Team, the Commander Brigadier General Evan Dertine and his wife Erica. The Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Tico Mazid and his wife Diana. The Director of Financial Management and Comptroller, Air Force Special Operations Command, Bill Roan and his wife Rita. The former Command Chief, Air Force Special Operations Command, Chief Master Sergeant Wayne Norad, United States Air Force retired, and his wife Tracy. From the 1st Special Operations Wing Command Team, the Commander, Colonel Tom Polinski, 
and his wife, Jaren. <laughs> the Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Dave Wolf, and his wife, Danielle. From the 33rd Fighter Wing Team, the Commander, Colonel Max Moga, and his wife, Amanda. The Command Chief, 33rd Fighter Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Yasmeen Wilson. The Command Chief, 505th Command and Control Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Anthony Duplache and his wife, Dariska. The Command Chief, 24th Special Operations Wing, Chief Master Sergeant James Clark and his wife, Lynn. The presenting sponsor for this event, the President and CEO of Eglin Federal Credit Union, Mr. Jerry Williams and his wife, Jean. <laughs> the Chairman of the Board, Air Force Enlisted Village, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Joe Mast and his wife, Amy. <laughs> Member of the Board of Directors, Air Force Enlisted Village, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Alexia Brown. Air Force Sergeant Association Executive Director Keith Reed. And we are so pleased to recognize a very special guest with us this evening, Mrs. Jan Binnaker, wife of the 9th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Jim Binnaker. And finally, our president and CEO and host for this evening, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Brooke McLean and his wife, Maria. We would also like to welcome all friends of the Air Force Enlisted Village, and most importantly, the residents of Bob Hope Village and Hawthorne House. Thank you all for attending. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to celebrate 50 years of the Air Force Enlisted Village providing homes to surviving spouses of retired enlisted airmen. We want to begin by thanking our presenting sponsor for this evening, Jerry Williams and Eglin Federal Credit Union. We appreciate your continued support of this wonderful community. During our program this evening, we will share with you the history of the Air Force Enlisted Village, the impact it has on the local community, as well as its importance to the Air Force. Following a short intermission later in the program, we have a very special treat for all of you. The band High Altitude from the 193rd Special Operations Wing Air National Guard will be providing live entertainment for us. So, stretch out those hamstrings, Sean Farrell. <laughs> and lace up your dancing shoes, Chief Smith. It's going to be a fun night. Before dinner is served, we'd like to invite our chairman of the board, Joe Mass, to the stage for a champagne toast. I've never been one to stick to a script, so I won't. Uh, before uh, I get a, propose a toast here, uh, one thing I asked the staff to do was to, uh, I, I wanted to know of the residents that are here tonight, uh, which widow has actually lived in the village the longest. And, uh, that honor goes to Miss Alice Kaufman. Where is Miss Alice Kaufman?
And as you well know, is, uh, you know the, the, the original mission was to take on an Air Force enlisted widows. We expanded that mission to also take on uh, Air Force couples. So the couple that's here tonight that's lived at the village the longest is John, John and Mrs. Boyer. Where are they at? This is a pretty special occasion, and I'm absolutely amazed and honored to have such uh, distinguished guests out here. And I'm really super glad. I see some Airmen First out in, the, out in the audience. Thank you so much for coming. It means a lot to our future Air Force. Thank you. <clears throat> Over 50 years ago, it started as a dream. From dream to vision. From vision into development of villages one through five. Providing a quality senior living community for our enlisted widows and now couples. The Air Force Board of Directors, President and CEO, and the entire Air Force Enlisted Village staff are the caretakers of preserving that dream. And to continually improve the Air Force Enlisted Village for our over 500 residents. Please charge your glasses. And this is a three-parter. Yeah, please stand if you don't mind. And raise your glasses to the past 50 years of providing this community to our widows, widowers, and couples. Here, here. To the next 50 years, of the Air Force Enlisted Village. Hear, hear. <laughs> Lastly and most importantly, to our Air Force Enlisted Village residents who faithfully served our nation so well. Hear, hear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you arrived hungry because dinner is served. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to invite three very special people to come forward to cut our 50th anniversary cake. Miss Anita Doan, a resident at Bob Hope Village for the past six years. She truly believes in having fun and has even made an appearance in our Fun Never Gets Old video. <laughs> Miss Opal Tibbetts, our Director of Admissions for the past 31 years. Where is she? and our president and CEO, Brooke McLean.
gentlemen, it's now time to take a 15-minute intermission. We will resume our program shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and take your seats, and we're going to continue the program. We'll do it one more time. I got it. All right, people, take your seats. We're not playing. <laughs> Get them, Miss Donna. Yes, sit down. <laughs> sit down, Miss Donna. I'm going to start calling everybody by name that's still yeah, standing. Yep, you all are being called out. Let's Ed go. Ed Espinosa, Jan Holt, Mia Hughes, Tony Hughes. Sit down. Sit down. Roll Tide. Macy Mason. They don't like that, do they? I'm going to call them by name. They need to follow instructions. They can't pick and choose which rules they follow, can they? Tom Polinsky, sit down. It wasn't me. I blame her all the time. She said partner in crime. She meant it. I hope we have jobs on Monday. <laughs> Mrs. Tucker, you need some love? Yeah, it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Mrs. Tucker. Should we sing happy birthday? Vivian to her? Tucker, can we sing happy birthday, Ed Espinosa? Come on, Ed, lead us Come on, in happy Ed. birthday. Not just happy from down birthday. there. America. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vivian. Happy birthday to you. It's okay, my birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday. Stop. <laughs> I got the greatest gift ever. My daughter flew in. Yay. Amen. So if this night wasn't special enough, I have more to share. The Honorable Matt Gates of the 1st District of Florida will read this proclamation into congressional record on the 13th day of February 2018 recognizing the Air Force Enlisted Village, celebrating their 50th anniversary. A small quote from the proclamation, the United States military family is stronger because of these spouses and their dedication and support. It is only fitting that when the time comes, they are provided a loving and worry-free place to call home. And over here is a copy. We hope you all enjoyed your delicious dinner. And I know that I personally have eaten a lot of meals here at Soundside over the past 24 years. And I think that was the best meal I've ever had here Amen. by far. <laughs> so thank you to all the wonderful Soundside staff for serving our meal and making it so wonderful tonight.
Thank you. So after listening to High Altitude and getting a taste of how awesome they are, I know that you all realize that the band rocks. But wait until you hear our next speaker. He rocks too. <laughs> he served in the Air Force for 30 years and then joined the Air Force Enlisted Village in 2013 as the Director of Development. He then became the President and CEO in 2015. It is my honor to introduce Brooke McLean. All right, so uh, in, in case you're wondering, I, I did have Tracy submit her resignation and it's in a sealed envelope in my desk. And in case of emergency, we will open that bad boy up. Well, thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, it, it's obviously a very special evening for us and uh, you being here makes it that much better. Um, General Webb, sir, thank you for coming out. Chief Wright, my friend, thank you so much. And really all the people that are here, commanders, chiefs, command chiefs, um, you really add a lot by being here and sharing with us tonight. So, if you are a current or former resident of the Air Force Enlisted Village, and you can do so, would you please stand up? Thank you so much for your service to our nation. You served in a time that most of us can't even begin to understand. But we do appreciate your sacrifices and we're honored to be part of your lives today. The AFEV has been on a remarkable journey for the last 15 years. From our foundation as the Air Force Enlisted Men's Widows Home to today, we have accomplished some very unique things. By our very nature, we are a unique organization. We're a nonprofit, philanthropic, senior living community, but we're also part of the Air Force family. We blend the goodness of nonprofit work, filling a social need either too complicated or too expensive for the government to do, with philanthropy that allows us to tap into resources that are not available to dividend paying organizations. And we blend it all under the umbrella and support and with the benefit to our military and especially to our Air Force. I think that makes us pretty unique. We clearly we didn't get here on our own without the dedicated, hardworking support of many, many people. From the senior officers in the 1960s like General John McConnell and General John Ryan, to our first Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Paul Airy, and the leadership at the Air Force Sergeants Association, to the elected officials like Representative Bob Sykes, and of course, Representative Matt Gates. We enjoy tremendous support from many different directions. We owe our leadership a great deal of thanks. And I think the fact that Chief Wright is here with us tonight and he is our guest speaker speaks volume to the amount of support that we receive from our Air Force. We've been blessed with some amazing staff and leaders over the years. The people who went before me as CEO, Nick Massone, Loyal Weaver, and Jim Binnaker. These great leaders are giants and they're visionaries and they brought us to the point that we are today. We've also been blessed with staff members that have gone above and beyond. Staff members like Joel Talley, who was a Air Force Cross winner in Vietnam. Joel, thank you very much, God bless you. Dick Young, who served as our deputy CEO and CFO, serving in the organization for over 19 years. Whoop. And of course, our reigning champion of employment tenure, Miss Opal Tibbetts, at 31 years, Miss Opal. Woo! Day in and day out, the 108 staff members of the AFEV make it our mission to humbly serve our residents. 
But we'll set a little bit of humility aside, aside right now, and I think I'll just say that we do a pretty darn good job of doing that. <laughs> but we're not finished. As the saying goes, if you're resting on your laurels, you're wearing them in the wrong place. We can look back at 50 years with pride and a sense of accomplishment, but the real challenge is in front of us. The baby boom generation is on the way. There are 3 million people a year turning 65 for the next 15 years. That's 9,000 people a day turning 65 in the United States for the next 15 years. We are going to need a lot more Air Force enlisted village-like communities around our nation to be able to care for that. And we're going to have to do something special to be able to do that. Uh, the pay and benefits have improved. Things are a lot better, a lot different than they had been in the past. But life provides some uncertain circumstances, and we still find that there is a premium on having a community like ours. Fifty years ago, we formed the organization. And the first tasker that we had was, after we had figured out the why and the what, was to figure out where. And Fort Walton Beach was the obvious choice. Not only is this a military town, and excuse our joint partners that are with us tonight, but this is an Air Force town. The community support is evidenced by not only the support of organizations like Eglin Federal Credit Union, but also by the countless volunteers that we have that come and join us, and the overall sense of being welcome and being part and integrated into this community. So we are very, very fortunate to be here. We're fortunate to be part of this community. We simply couldn't be enjoying the celebration that we are tonight without the support of our sponsor, Eglin Federal Credit Union. They're, yeah. They're great community partners, uh, and I have the distinct honor of asking their CEO, Mr. Jerry Williams, to come join me on stage and provide a couple comments, and he's also going to introduce Chief Wright. Most of you know Jerry and his lovely wife, Jean. We're very fortunate to have community-minded people like this as our dear friends. Jerry's very involved. He's honorary commander, had been at uh, both Eglin and at Hurlburt. Uh, he's also sitting on nonprofit boards, including the Fisher House of the Emerald Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Jerry Williams. Thank you, Brooke, for the introduction. And thank you all for allowing us to be here this evening. Gene and I are truly honored to be among such a great group of people. To all the distinguished guests here tonight, it's our privilege to be here. You know, my phone rang a few months ago. It was Scott Elvo and Brooke McLean. And they said, Jerry, we'd like to take you to lunch. <laughs> well, I've got a calendar around here somewhere. Let me see. How about we go to Clemenza's? I found my calendar. <laughs> Clemenza's is one of our favorite places to go. So, Dom, I know you're out there somewhere. We, uh, we had lunch, great military supporters of, of this area. So we go there, we have lunch, and uh, you know, the first thing that they said is, you know, we want you to realize we're not putting something on that's a fundraiser, but we're gonna need funds. <laughs> okay, um, the difference? We're having a celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Air Force Enlisted Village. And you guys, Eglin Federal Credit Union, have been such a vital part of our development in supporting us through all these years that we think it's very appropriate for Eglin Federal Credit Union to be the, the presenting sponsor for that evening. And I had to agree with them. <laughs> but when they said it like this, he looked at me and he said, Act like your mom is a resident of the village. <laughs> Would you do this to your mom? <laughs> Would you do this for your mom? <laughs> Would your mom approve? <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. Okay. <clears throat> the mom rule applied. So we left there that day with two things. One, a full belly. I did start eating about five days later, Dom. <laughs> and the mission to go back to the credit union and try to seek the funding for tonight's event. 
Well, if you know the board and the volunteers of Eglin Federal Credit Union very well, you know that it didn't take a lot of convincing on my part. So I start the meeting, and as I told them about it, and I said, you know, a few things about the event, you know, the time and all that, and then I said, act as if your moms were residents of the city. <laughs> so I had an eye, a second, and a motion to support tonight's event. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to some of the folks that have been instrumental in supporting the enlisted village that are also now on the board of the credit union. Retired Chief Bob Harlan, from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and on through, when he was a chief, and then retired Chief Steve Saban, similar thing, as part of the chief's group, have pig roast and other fundraisers for the enlisted village throughout all the years when they were voluntold, active duty, and now they're volunteers, they're retired, and still enjoy uh, serving the community. James and Deborah Pitts, James retired military. Sherry Harlow, many of you all know her as our marketing, marketing manager. Nicholas Doublefield, our uh, PR director. I was gonna say personnel, but that's not what PR uh, stands for. Um, where are the others? Um, Barbara and Charles Patty. Barbara is retired military, or retired civil service as well. So these are the folks that voted yes that night to support this evening. So thank you all for the, the support there. We also, oh, and Bill and Rita Roan, sitting right in front of me. Yes, sorry about that. I'm looking around the tables. So Bill is retired SES from, uh, from Herbert Field. Tonight we also have with us two very special guests. When I went to interview at Eglin Federal Credit Union in May of 1994, I walked into the executive suite, and this lovely lady right here, Ms. Mary Nell Wood, was the executive secretary to Jim Appleton, our former CEO. So I got to know her over the years and her husband Foley. They are now residents of the enlisted village. So we've gone full circle. So that makes it that much more special for us to, to, to do tonight. And I saw Duffy and Gene Ringstead over here. Their grandson works as my Fort Walton Beach branch manager and does a fabulous job for us. So thank you for being our honored guest tonight. We really appreciate you being here. 2016, the Association for Defense Communities started a, an effort to recognize great American defense communities. And that year, Eglin, Herbert, Duke, the greater area here, was named as a greater, great American defense community. And the Air Force Enlisted Villages is one example of what they found when they came to this area, looking for support for all of the military missions, not just the active duty personnel, but the spouses as well. So congratulations to this area for that. And I've talked with many of the commanders from the local area, and they say that this area is one of the best, if not the best areas for supporting the military. We're proud to be a part of that. The Air Force Enlisted Village has had 17,000 residents move through this area since the Teresa Village area. Countless friends and families have visited this area, helping to build the economy for the area. Some of that growth was encouraged by Colonel Bob Gates when he was uh, a commander at Hobart, talked with his friend Bob Hope, who was a pilot for him during the USO days. They struck up a friendship, and Bob Hope was able to get some of his Hollywood buddies to do fundraisers over a period of time, and they raised a million dollars to build the campus that is now out in Paquito Bayou called Bob Hope Village in his honor. Michael Gates and his wife Cindy, Michael is the attorney for the association is here with us tonight. Nice to see you all. <laughs> the Hawthorne House was added for the memory care unit and assisted living. Village Five, if you've not seen Village Five, you need to go out and get a tour. Brooke, I'm actually hoping to get the, uh, the board of the, of the enlisted village to modify the charter to allow retired executives of credit unions. <laughs> <laughs> and banks, and banks, and my Tony, Tony, Tony and Mia Hughes. Uh, any financial institution would be just fine. It is a beautiful place. It is fabulously built. Lord and Son, local developers built that, and it is just awesome. It's top notch. Today, the bear contractors are renovating the community center. Once finished, the community center will include an entire wing dedicated to the health and wellness and enhance the ability for residents to age successfully. Each year, 
the Air Force enlisted village contracts with many local companies to maintain their 125 acre site and over 420 independent and assisted living apartments. Residents of the village give back to the community by volunteering at the USO, the Red Cross, hospitals, and local shelters. In fact, the Air Force enlisted village was selected to be a shelter and a collection point for donations during the Hurricane Irma mess that we had this past year. So they're seen as a very uh, good place to have as a, as a uh, uh, what's the word? Shelter, that's the word, thank you. <laughs> Slipped my mind. All right, help from my banking buddies. Many civic organizations use the enlisted village. I know that out at the uh, community center, Models is out there. I think they throw them there for the food. If you haven't been there, the food is awesome. Dennis does a great job. But communities, uh, you know, several different organizations throughout the community use that facility. Some of the other events that we sponsor throughout the year, the golf tournament. I was talking with Chief earlier. Chief is a golfer. I'm not a golfer. It's not in my AFSC, Air Force Specialty Code. Not my thing. When I walked away from the first hole that day, I was two under. <laughs> One under a tree over here on this side. <laughs> Never found it. One under the water, just right down the middle. So it's not my specialty code. But we did raise a lot of money that day, had a lot of fun. The, uh, the enlisted village benefited from that. Something that I am better at is running. Yes, all right. So three years ago, after Chief James Benneker passed, they wanted to have a memorial run in his honor. And they came up with a 9K. Now, who has a 9K? <laughs> the Enlisted Village does. It's about 5.6, 5.7 miles, and it is a fabulous run. And his run in his honor, because he was the uh, executive at the Enlisted Village for about 15 years after a 33-year military service. His wife, Jan, was introduced earlier uh, and is here this, this evening with us. This year, we're going to do the fourth annual in September, so I invite all of you to come out and, and run with us. It's a fabulous event. Chief Benneker was the ninth Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. To become the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force takes a lot of standing out of the crowd. The Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force represents the highest enlisted level of leadership and, as such, provides direction for the enlisted force and represents their interests as appropriate to the American public and to those in all levels of government. He serves as the personal advisor to the Chief of Staff and to the Secretary of the Air Force on all issues regarding welfare, readiness, morale, and proper utilization and progress of the enlisted force. Tonight, we're privileged to have with us the 18th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Khalith O. Wright. Chief Wright, would you join me on stage, please? Fifty years, wow, uh, what an amazing accomplishment, and Tanya and I are so excited uh, to be here to be a part of this celebration. So I got fussed at by Mrs. Green a little earlier for <laughs> making sure that we clapped before all of the DVs were, were announced. Uh, but that was a bit strategic. Uh, one, I, made, I wanted to make sure that everybody was recognized properly so that I didn't have to do it again when I came up. <laughs> So let me say to all of the leaders, all of the supporters, all of our civic leaders, all of our great friends and family, all of the residents, welcome and thank you again so much for allowing us to be here. I did want to say a special thank you uh, to my good friend Brooke. Uh, we've been friends for some years now when I was a young uh, up and coming chief trying to get into the command chief business. He was the pac command chief and uh, provided me lots of mentorship and guidance and help give me uh, on the way and is partly responsible for where I am today. So thank you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and I also did want to say a special welcome to Mrs. Benneker. Uh, so what an honor, uh, I'm not sure if she's uh, still in the room or not, but uh, what an honor for me to have the opportunity uh, to, to meet her 
today. Uh, I, you know, I, I never, I got to meet Chief Binnaker uh, maybe when I was a young airman NCO, and, and so to, to be here with uh, Ms. Jan is just an amazing uh, feeling for me. So, again, thank you. Uh, today, uh, I had a little bit of downtime. I typically, when I'm uh, on trips like this, uh, I don't really get much downtime, but I had a couple hours today uh, to kind of mill around a little bit. So, I printed off, everybody was off taking naps. I, I think Tanya was out walking or crocheting or doing something. And, uh, <laughs> So I ventured off the, down to the Target, I think over by, I think it's Miracle Parkway or something. And I was doing a little bit of shopping, and uh, I decided to stop at the Starbucks inside the Target and grab me a, a cup of coffee, decaf, so a big decaf coffee now. And uh, I sat down, and uh, along comes uh, uh, an old lady, uh, who her, her name was Mrs. Hazel, and she asked, hey, do you mind if I join you? Sure, why not? Something I do typically when I see a uh, young airman, so I didn't mind if, if she joined me. So she sat down. Uh, it turns out she's 82 years old. She just got married for the fourth time. <laughs> I thought, wow, Miss Hazel. <laughs> and so we had a great conversation about life, about kids, about all kinds of things. And I was asking her, okay, how is it being married for the fourth time? And, and what is it that your, uh, your new husband, what, what does he do? And she said, oh, uh, he's a funeral director. <laughs> All right, no, no problem. That's interesting. And uh, so then I got a little bit intrigued, and I said, well, what about your other three husbands? What did they do? And so she had to think a little bit that, you know, she's 82, so it took her a little while as she was going through it. And then she said, okay, in my 20s, I married a banker. And then in my 40s, I married a preacher. And then in my... In my 40s, I married a circus ringmaster. I'm sorry, she said I married a circus ringmaster. And then in my 60s, I married a preacher, and now I'm in my 80s, and I married a funeral director. <laughs> I said, wow, Miss Hazel, you know, what a diverse group of men that you, that you married. And I said, why? And she paused for a minute, and she smiled, and she said, well, son, I married the first one for the money. I married the second one for the show. I married the third one to get ready. And I married the fourth one to go. <laughs> so to this day, I don't know if Miss Hazel was just pulling my leg or if she actually married uh, four, four people, but. Uh, nonetheless, I was very intrigued by her, much like I'm intrigued by the Air Force Enlisted Village. I'm, I'm mostly intrigued by the uniqueness of the Air Force Enlisted Village. Now, some of you might believe that the Air Force and the, the, the Village is so unique because uh, we're the only service that does this type of thing, uh, put, put our widows up and, and make a comfortable home for, for our enlisted widows. So none of the other service Service, services do this for their enlisted airmen and, and families. And yes, I guess that would make us uh, unique. There are other things that I think also contribute to, to us being unique. Our dedication to being airmen for life and being family and taking care of each other from beginning to end. Uh, I often wonder if it's the leadership that makes it so unique. So between uh, Brooke and his team and Joe, our chairman of the board, and their vision for the enlisted village and all the great things that they're doing, building the community center, working on Village 5, uh, all the dedication and hard work that they pour into it, uh, maybe that's what makes uh, the Air Force enlisted village so unique. Or maybe it's the staff. Uh, so whether it's one of the directors or the ground speakers. Yeah. Every single experience that I've had with all of the staff has been nothing but positive. I mean, they are the utmost professionals. They dedicate their lives to making uh, things smooth and efficient and making this a home and a family for all of the residents. So maybe it's the staff. Or maybe it's the volunteers. You know, we get about a thousand volunteers. Yeah, right? <laughs> We get about a thousand volunteers a year, mostly from this local area, but sometimes from outside the area, uh, 
collectively from our Air Force, we through through the, the command chiefs and the chiefs around the Air Force, we donate about a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, all of the normal groups, the base five, six, the top three, the chiefs group. Uh, the Airmen's Councils, uh, I think we have a few folks here tonight, uh, Sergeant Lane, Sergeant Wheatley, Sergeant Miller, and uh, Airman Kennedy. Is Airman Kennedy here from, yeah, uh, who runs the Airmen's Council at Keesler, right? All right, good, good. So a lot of, a lot of great folks doing a lot of volunteering that contribute, and I, and I, and I think uh, it, it, it contributes significantly to of the Air Force building. So maybe it's the volunteers. Or maybe, just maybe, it's the rest of us. <laughs> Residents like Mrs. Hansen. Mrs. Hansen, who lost both of her parents. And while she and had a bout with cancer, and while she was in treatment, she ran across an Air Force chaplain who introduced her to our Air Force village. Maybe it's residents, uh, the, the residents who helped out Tech Sergeant Campbell. So Tech Sergeant Campbell uh, lost his wife suddenly, and him and his four children were staying here in Teresa Village. And all the residents came and gathered around him and made sure that him and the kids had food and anything that they needed uh, while they were transitioning to his, his next location. Maybe it's residents like Mrs. Lila. Mrs. Lila who recently uh, wrote a letter to the staff uh, saying how much she appreciated uh, everything that they do, especially how much Brooke and the team always remember special days like birthdays and Christmas and Thanksgiving and whatnot. My experience with the residents has been absolutely amazing. From getting my butt kicked in wee bowling, <laughs> I think I've seen some of the corporates here in the room. From all the opportunities I had to sit down and have lunch, have dinner, I was able to go and visit uh, several residents into their apartments or in, in, in their rooms, depending on uh, which area they lived in. It's been nothing but positive, amazing experiences through our, our residents. And I found there was a common theme. They all talked about the importance of family and how much this felt like home and how much they enjoyed being around family and how much they made new friends and how great the staff was. I tell you, I'm, I'm more inspired by the residents than anything else. I mean, that just gives me a high. So maybe it's the residents that make the village so unique. So I, so I think we could probably all agree there are many things that contribute to our organization being such a unique place. And I suspect, you know, it, it doesn't really matter which one is the most important. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter which one makes us the most unique. I think as long as we keep the family and the team together for the next 50 years, the leadership, the residents, the staff, volunteers. That's what matters the most and that's what will continue to make our enlisted village so unique 50 years down the road. Now, now I tell you, I, I, as I think back about, about my conversation with Mrs. Hazel, and I wonder how, how much I'm actually like her four spouses. Uh, not sure that I'm exactly like all of them. Uh, not necessarily like the banker. Uh, I don't have any money. Uh, but I can put on a show. I say that. And whoever my dance partner is, they better get ready because it's almost time to go. Thank you. <laughs> Chief Wright, I want to be like Hazel. <laughs>
We'd like you to stay on stage while Brooke joins us to present something special for you and our appreciation. Chief Wright, thank you for being the guest speaker at the Air Force and 50th Anniversary Gala. As a small token of our appreciation, your name has been engraved on a large brick that will be permanently placed on the wall <laughs> in our Garden of Hope at Bob Hope Village. <laughs> and he can clap anytime he wants to, I'm just saying. <laughs> But hey, I just wanted to uh, just kind of make a couple quick wrap-up comments. Um, Chief Wright, thank you so much for uh, your uh, great comments and your spot on with everything you said. Um, Jerry, thank you, sir, for blending in the community portion of that. Um, there's a whole ton of thanks that need to go out tonight, and we're going to mention some people in just a second. But there's a couple people that have really, really worked hard uh, to make this happen. Uh, and they say that, you know, to be successful at anything, you have to have a really strong spouse. General Farrell, I think I understand a little bit more about your career success now, sir. <laughs> Annie Farrell and uh, Scarlett Bauman have been working this event for months. And what you see here is the fruit of an incredible amount of labor. So uh, it was beautiful, it was fabulous. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. I did kind of get the look a couple times earlier today when I was suggesting some changes to it. So, um, but it was okay, we survived that. Um, but for the other staff members that are here, we had so many people that came out and did that. And uh, for we mentioned staff a couple times already, but if you're a staff member of the Air Force Enlisted Village, will you please stand and be recognized for all that you do for us? We have an absolutely fabulous team. So thank you all for coming out tonight. We're going to turn it back over to the MCs and let them wrap things up. But I just want to say God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming out and sharing this evening with us. It means so much, and you look so beautiful out there. So enjoy the rest of the evening, and don't go racing off as soon as the music starts. We've got a lot of partying still to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to make Brooke a little bit nervous and go off script here for just a second, if it's okay. Okay. He's, he really does have my resignation letter in his pocket, just in case we get a little too crazy up here. No, but I just want to recognize the fact that we have a lot of very young airmen in the room tonight, around the room. I think if we could give them a round of applause for being here. And Chief, Chief Smith, I'm sorry, but we took a selfie at our table and I'm sending our picture to their commander and hoping that they get promoted very quickly. Hoorah! <laughs> Five on the EPR. Um, but I just wanna, I just wanna, is that okay, Chief Wright? You did clap inappropriately, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, thank you. There you go, see? <laughs> um, but I do wanna just encourage the young airmen in the room and I think all the residents in here and the staff will agree that we love seeing you all come out and volunteer at the Air Force Enlisted Village. And so there are always opportunities every week, every month, all the time for you all to come out and volunteer. And as you can tell, we're a lot of fun. The residents are even more fun. Um, so whenever you, you see tell. those emails come across, I know you get a lot of emails, but when you see those volunteer opportunities come across your desk, sign up, grab a couple friends, and come out and volunteer. We serve alcohol. <laughs> Only if you're 21. Is that only if you're 21? Okay. All right. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I guess we both need resignations. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed the Air Force Enlisted Village's 50th anniversary gala. We could not have pulled off this event without the help of the entire AFSOC protocol team, including Ms. Charma Rutherford. 
Thank you all so much because they have volunteered their time to help us out tonight. As a token of our appreciation for everyone who was in attendance, there are several mementos on the table for you to take home. There's a pillow box of chocolates, a 50th anniversary coin, a 50th anniversary pin, and a lovely champagne glass. You will also find that there are bags with tissue paper for you to take all of your goodies home. If you took a photo when you first came in, don't forget to pick them up prior to leaving. They will be on the check-in tables at the main hallway as you exit. But the goodness does not end there. Nope. Okay. So how can this get any better? Okay. Tell now us, listen. Tracy. Listen. We have got to keep some decorum on this part because I know it's going to get a little messy in here. So settle down. There are beautiful centerpieces in the middle of each table. Those are also going home with one guest at each table. Not in the bag. No, it's not going in the bag. Mm -mm. And the way you figure it out is this. Now, there are a lot of dessert plates still on the gold chargers. And for those of you who don't know what a gold charger is, it's the round gold plate. And the way you're going to figure out who wins the centerpiece look at this. is look underneath. Beautiful. And if you have the 50th anniversary sticker, scream bingo, you win the centerpiece. Now listen, General Webb has better things to do on a Saturday than to steam clean Air Force blue icing out of the carpet. So don't drop your cake. There we go. Congratulations, Congratulations to all of our centerpiece winners. <laughs> Chief Smith is very disappointed. Did you win? Sorry, Sorry, sir. All right, did we find all of our winners? Are we good? Good. At this time, we will begin our ceremonial first dance. Chief Wright, Brooke, Joe, will you please escort a resident to the dance floor for the first dance? At the conclusion of the dance of the first song, the dance, will be, the dance floor will be open to all those willing and able. We ask, don't break a hip. Good. Enjoy your evening. And just as a reminder, the cash bar is still open. <laughs> good night. Thank you all very much and good night.